This NBA season has been interesting to say the least. Whether it be a new player dropping 40, 50, sometimes 60, or even 70 points, or the insanely competitive MVP and Depoy races, it's been hard not to be entertained this year. But one thing I think we all would agree on as NBA fans has been missing this season have been the trades. These past two years, it's felt like we have to wait all the way up until the deadline to get any major moves. And while it seemed like the deadline might pass with no significant trades, I think there are going to be a lot of last minute buyers this year, which is why I want to break down who should be this deadline's buyers and sellers. The Trailblazers are my first buyer and that's because of choices that they have made. They have made it very clear that they are staying bought into Damon. If they're going to win a championship, he's going to be the centerpiece. While Joe Cronin and Jody Allen, the clock is ticking and if you couldn't tell you aren't contenders Anthony Simons has been awesome and while I'm not worried about the offensive problems between him and Dane we've seen firsthand that a small guard lineup does not win you playoff games defensively Simons value is very high right now and cashing in on him and some other valuable assets for a player like Sadiq Bey or OG Ananobi could be very worth it Shea Gilders Alexander said at the end of last season that he was done losing and he wanted to be competitive and the Thunder have followed up on that of course they're not title contenders but they're looking like a real play-in team it could make a pretty riskless win now move. Making a move for a player like OG, John Collins, Sadiq, or Bamba shows both Shea and the fans that you're committed to being competitive. Plus, they have so many damn picks that they could really outbid any other team who chooses to go after these players. The Bucks are good, and more specifically, Giannis Antetokounmpo has been great. So good, in fact, that a Bucks team that's only had Chris Milton for 20% of the season has remained top three in a competitive Eastern Conference. The Bucks don't have a lot of chips to move, but they don't need to make a big move. Bobby Portis and Brooke Lopez have taken huge leaps for the Bucks this year. Brooke Lopez has been a top three candidate for defensive player of the year and his shot blocking and ability to challenge both players in the pick and roll has him anchoring a top three defense in the league. And Bobby Portis has been a beast for the Bucks. Not only has he been incredibly efficient while still posting 14 points a game off the bench, he's hauling 10 rebounds a game as well, which is 10th most in the league off the bench, ladies and gentlemen. And his case for six man of the year gets stronger by the day. Like I said, the Bucks don't need to make a big move, but their name has already been in conversations for a Jay Crowder or a Bojan Bogdanovic. If they could get a player like that, they could bolster their depth and put themselves over the top in the Eastern Conference. The Miami Heat, despite a shaky start, find themselves back in the playoffs. Miami's timeline is ticking more than anyone on this list though. Jimmy and Lowry aren't getting any younger and Hero hasn't taken the steps you were hoping he would. But Bam has been awesome. And Jimmy has been awesome enough that Heat fans could rationalize making a big win now move. Miami's name has popped up when any notable star or player has rumblings of them wanting out. And I think this deadline, they should be big buyers. You have some draft capital to move. So maybe you call Toronto and see what the ASCII price is for Van Fleet or Ananobi. Call Chicago, see what they want for Levine. Washington, what they want for Beal. An offensive boost could turn the Heat into real contenders again. The Phoenix Suns are in trouble. To go from in the NBA Finals to the first seed with the best record in the NBA to barely over 500 is embarrassing. Now when Booker plays, they're still 18 and 11. But when he does it, they're 8 and 14. This team has not improved at all since that finals run. The Phoenix Suns have all of their draft picks and a lot of young pieces to move. I was at that Mavs game and it was embarrassing to lose to a team without Luka at home. Aiton is not playing like the player that Suns fans and we as NBA fans know he can be. I know Jay Crowder isn't that much of a valuable asset anymore, but he could be a great complimentary piece in a trade. And teams like Milwaukee still have interest. Go see how much Atlanta actually wants for John Collins. Fix your guard rotation. Go give Fred Van Vliet or Eric Gordon. Make a big move while you still can. They have done nothing since the finals, and sooner or later, something needs to change. The Toronto Raptors have been mine and many others' most disappointing team this season. I don't know if anyone outside of Toronto was expecting to make a deep playoff run, but most of us were expecting to be a consistent playoff team again. They've been anything but that, and more disappointing than that is outside of Pascal, they haven't been that much fun either. Fred looks like he's checked out, and rumors of OG wanting out have circulated all season. Maybe it's time to partially cash out. I believe that someone like Portland, OKC, or New York would reach that three pick asking price for OG Ananobi. And there is still interest in Fred Van Vliet despite his weaker season. Toronto doesn't need to blow it up, but you could get a lot of value in a retool this season. Now that the Sacramento Kings are a playoff basketball team, and more importantly, a fun basketball team, we need to recognize the Charlotte Hornets as one of, if not the worst ran organization in the NBA. We went from watching them waste five years of Kimba's prime to look like they're gonna waste LaMelo's too. Of course, not everything that has happened to Charlotte the past few years is management's fault, but they did sign Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward to those contracts, and they choose to play Mason Plumlee 30 minutes a night over Kai Jones and Mark Williams. It's time to sell Hayward and Rozier, even if it isn't for that much. You're already in the Wimby race, and you should fully commit. Mello is young enough for you to soft reset the tank. So let's see what players like James Booknight, JT Thor, and Kai Jones can do with real minutes. 
this one hits home. The Chicago Bulls need to hit the reset button, ladies and gentlemen. It was fun while it lasted, but the Levine, DeMar, Vooch era is already over. The Bulls have been a fringe playoff team this season, DeMar is not getting any younger, and the worst part is they don't even have their own pick in this draft. There are a lot of valuable pieces on this team though. DeMar could net you a pick from a contender looking for another scoring threat. Caruso could net you a pick from the Warriors or Knicks who've already shown interest. And Levine could be worth a DeJounte Murray level package minimum. There are promising young players on this team too who would be eager to take those minutes. Ayo Dosumu and Patrick Williams have already proven that they're NBA quality talents. In their 15th pick in this year's draft, Daylon Terry looked like a defensive beast in college. The Bulls have options to start rebuilding. They just need to cash in on them while they're still valuable. The Wizards have spent the past five seasons in NBA no man's land. Not good enough to compete or consistently make the playoffs, but not bad enough to draft highly. And when they do, they don't draft well. On top of all that, they just signed Bradley Beal to an enormous contract this offseason that for some reason included a no trade clause. Despite all this, Tommy Shepard continues to trick himself that he can right the ship. And I'm here to tell you that the best way to right the ship is to rebuild. You already made moving Beal a difficult task, but Kuzma made it clear he wants to play in a big market, and he's a really valuable name to contenders. Ask Beal how he feels about Miami or Los Angeles. See what you could get for these guys. This is the year to restart. The Hawks had one of the most exciting offseasons in the NBA and showed that they were willing to make a big move to win now. The trade for DeJounte was one of the most exciting and risky moves of the offseason, so now I'm confused why they won't make any deals. John Collins, DeAndre Hunter, and Clint Capella have all appeared in trade rumors throughout the season, and John Collins has been in trade rumors since pre the Biden administration. Atlanta certainly doesn't need to blow it up. They're just below 500, and we all knew it was going to take an adjustment period for them to figure this thing out. But please, for the love of all that is holy trade John Collins. Not only are you already in an adjustment period like I said, but your locker room problems will get at least 60% better the second you got rid of them. And those are my buyers and sellers for this deadline. Tell me if you disagree with any of them. Let me know if I mentioned your team in the comments and if you agreed with what I said or disagreed, I'd love to know. Who did I miss? Who should be looking to offload a big contract or make a big move this deadline? Let me know down below. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and peace.